I do think this is the beginning of the final leg down in Bitcoin. I don't think we're there yet. Uh, what we saw with Lehman is that when Lehman occurred, Hello everyone, today our guest is Gareth Soloway. In this video, Gareth Soloway predicts when Bitcoin going to bottom, as well as what to expect in the short term after the FTX collapse. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. Bitcoin at 16,181 starts a new week still replaying November 2020 after its lowest weekly close in two years. The largest cryptocurrency, just like the rest of the crypto industry, remains highly susceptible to downside risk as it continues to deal with the fallout from the implosion of exchange FTX. Contagion is the world on everyone's lips as November grinds on, just like the Terra collapse earlier this year. Fears are that new victims of FTX's giant liquidity vortex will continue to surface. The stakes are decidedly high. The initial shock may be over, but the consequences are only just beginning to surface. These include issues beyond just financial losses, as lawmakers attempt to grapple with FTX and place renewed emphasis on urgent Bitcoin and crypto regulation. Wait till the end as we discuss the mega potential contagion collapse in the upcoming few days. So let's take a look at the chart here, right? So here's your Bitcoin chart, right? And and one of the things that's interesting is that, you know, if we look to the charts, there's actually a trend line that if you connect the pre the pre 2017 bull market lows right here to the lows of the 2018 and 19 bear market, right? So you have you have these two lines connect, it connects right through the COVID low, and it basically gives us a current price of around 88,000 and change. And what we know is this is an up sloping trend line. So probably within four or five, six months, this is at 85 to $9,000. And again, it makes a lot of sense that you need Bitcoin to return to its longer term trend before it can find major support. So that gives that kind of confluence of, of, of technicals along with the Lehman Brothers kind of comparison with FTX. And, and just keep in mind, Lehman Brothers was the big thing, but there were other smaller banks that went bust after Lehman. It just, that's the headline one. So what that tells us is that you're still gonna have this chain reaction. We've heard about Genesis recently and other kind of other exchanges and so forth that are kind of going under or having trouble. But really FTX to me is probably the biggest one we will see. The interesting thing, and a lot of people have brought this up, they say, well, the Fed started printing money in 09, which is when the, the S&P bottomed. But in this case, it's very unlikely that in five to six months, the Fed will start printing money. Now, I don't think they'll be raising rates anymore. I just don't think they're gonna be cutting them or printing money. So then the question is, well, what's the catalyst that coordinates with the printing of money from the Fed in 09 that would be that Bitcoin low? And the answer is very simple here. It would be essentially that transparency, that regulation that we all know is coming now, right? You got a lot of big companies burned because of this FTX scenario. You got a lot of small investor is burned. There's a lot of pressure on the politicians, the SEC, to create that regulatory framework. And the reason why that's so important is because when you have clarity, when you have transparency in the crypto markets, that's going to draw big money back in. Big money after FTX is not coming back to crypto until they have that insight into what's on the books, the leverage these companies are taking and everything like that. So so really interesting. And by the way, after the, after the, the financial crisis, there was legislation passed to make it so that the banks couldn't be bad actors again. It was called Dodd-Frank. So you also see that kind of maneuvering here with the regulation that's probably coming for crypto. Yeah, I know a lot of people don't like that thought of regulation, but you know. People laugh at the 500,000 price target or so on Bitcoin, but I mean, it would not be a stretch if you had that type of money coming in, absolutely. Yeah, so I mean, even if you allocated 1% of 100 trillion, you got 10 trillion coming into space. That's 10X where Bitcoin was before, that's 600,000. Yep, that's right. That's right. And I think what people have to realize, too, is that, you know, you, people always look at this, you know, this kind of idealistic view of, of what crypto should be with no regulation, self kind of imposed. But we have to remember that 
there's no, you know, you don't have this idealistic human nature, right? We have people that are bad actors that are do, doing shady things. And so you, you got to choose which one's the one you're going to go with. Are you going to go with no regulation where people potentially, you know, your money vanishes on an exchange, you know, the next morning? Or do you go with, you know, the potential for some regulation and then maybe a little over-regulation, which is always a chance with politicians, but which one's the worst scenario, right? I'd personally rather a little bit more regulation versus my money on an exchange vanishing tomorrow. It's kind of interesting because what we saw with FTX uh, going bust and kind of the shady stuff going on, you know, it's very similar to Lehman Brothers in 2008. Um, the similarities, you know, you could say, well, FTX isn't really a bank, but in the crypto world, it kind of acts as the bank, right? The broker, the bank, which is exactly what Lehman was back in 08. So you look at that as kind of the big earthquake in the bear market. And, and in 2008, Lehman Brothers was kind of the, the, the thing that everyone remembers from that period. The markets, however, you know, a lot of people think the markets were bottoming just as that was happening. That was the final thing. But really, if you look at the charts, the chart showed us that it took about five to six months following Lehman Brothers for actually the, the market to bottom, the S&P 500 to bottom. So, so if you compare those, what it does is it gives us a little bit of a general guidance on when we could see that final washout in the markets of the crypto world. So I do think this is the beginning of the final leg down in Bitcoin. I don't think we're there yet. Uh, what we saw with Lehman is that when Lehman occurred, the S&P dropped about 45% more. So if you look at Bitcoin, that tells us that we could drop ba basically to 9,000, give or take. I mean, between 9 and 10 or right around 9,000 would be that same 45 percent drop so again it's kind of in eerie the similarities but one thing we know about trading is that humans tend to have the same emotions you know the, the greed the fear replicates which means these events technically will replicate over and over again you could go back to the tulip mania in the 1500s you could go to the dot-com bubble you could go to the the real estate bubble in, in 07 it, it just continues to repeat and we see it here in the crypto world again all right, so what is our time frame then? So we've talked about, you know, uh, the bottom trend, price returning to that. So what's the date? When are we going to see that happen? So again, I haven't isolated down to the specific date, but I think what we can do is we can go back to the S&P um, from, from 2008, right? And 2008, what we saw is on September 15th, I believe it was right here. This is when Lehman Brothers collapsed, this candle right here. And so that was on September 15th and the markets bottomed out on March 9th, right? So, or March 6th, excuse me. So basically what that does is it, it tells us September to October, October, November, November, December, Jan, uh, December to January, January to February to March. So basically you're talking about six to six months, give or take a little bit. And again, as we get closer, I think I'll isolate that price point down a little bit more. But I think right now you're kind of in that six month ish range of when we should bottom out from from the FTX collapse. So we're, again, the way I like to put it is this is the beginning of the final push down, right? I think that there's going to be more for selling. I mean, I, I remember even before FTX, I remember hearing that the government had, you know, had basically from Mt. Gox had accumulated 150,000 Bitcoin. They might sell those. You have other scenarios where where these forced bankruptcies, they're going to have coins on their sheets that they're going to have to sell to to try to pay back investors and, and raise capital. So there's going to be kind of this chain reaction, much like there was in the financial crisis. But it's the beginning of the end. Once you get that sorted out, I think that's where you bottom out. Then bring in the regulation, which I think will come. We'll see a framework, I bet, within three months and then something very firm within six months. And I think that coordinates to put in a bottom on crypto. Interesting. So what, what I'm thinking is, though, is that I, do, I think you're going to see this flip of Bitcoin becoming a safety asset in that period, right? So, so I actually think the stock market could actually continue lower and be in this protracted, this long-term bear market, mainly because I believe that the Fed isn't going to be able to lower rates or print more money because of inflation staying higher than 2%, right? So, so you're going to get in this bear market, this recession, and there's no way for us to get out. I mean, I don't even know if the economy knows anymore how to get out of recessions without the Fed's help. And so the question that I would have is then, do you see that March low as being the point where Bitcoin flips into a place to hide versus a risk asset, which it is right now? And that's what I kind of think could happen.
So it's going to be fun. I mean, uh, you know, I always tell people, people like when they hear 9,000, they're like, oh, no, you know, 9,000. But but I mean, at least we're close to the end, right? I mean, if you look at, you know, from 69,000 to 16,000, how much of a drop that is. And then all you're saying now is from 16 to 9. It's not that. I mean, percentage wise, it's a lot from here. But in, in the scheme of where we've been, it's not that much. Sentiment suggests that everyone is expecting the worst. A case in point comes in the form of Genesis Trading, part of the digital currency group conglomerate, which last week halted payouts at its crypto lending arm. This not only set off a string of rumors over Genesis' solvency, but also over DCG's future. Reassurances from executives have failed to stem the narrative, which has also focused on the largest institutional Bitcoin investment vehicle, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Thus, over the weekend, a growing debate over GBTC mushroomed into a full-blown panic over financial buoyancy. As Cointelegraph reported, this was made worse by Grayscale refusing to provide address details to prove its BTC reserves, allegedly for reasons related to security. Suspicions over a $1 billion owed by DCG to Genesis add to the melting pot of misgivings. At the same time, some well-known investors have added to their GBTC positions in recent weeks. Is the next black swan GBTC already around the corner? If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.